Hello and welcome to part three of the walkthrough of L, a mathematical adventure for the BBC Micro, a maths teaching text adventure for this 8-bit microcomputer from the 80s. Um, here we are. We have just found another mysterious geometrical uh, prismatic object of great value, but we're not going to go out and sell it. We are going to keep it and lug it around this castle uh, if it kills us. Which it never does, actually, which is possibly a an advantage of the game, a point of good design uh, in a game for uh, children, essentially, school children, because you don't want them to die every five minutes and hate maths, which they probably already do. Uh, let's not make it worse. Well done to the Association of Teachers of Mathematics from the UK. Um, okay, so here we are. We have these objects. We've just been through the um, baffling, the uh, inconsequential code room. And we found a dodecahedron, which goes along with our tetrahedron cube. And we are now going to retrace our steps. Uh, because that's what we walk through. There's a code room again. Um, uh, insane. We're out. We're back in the ante room. We're retracing our steps because that's what the walkthrough by Darren Izzard would have us do. Um, and who am I to argue with the brother of Eddie? East again, back in. Now, we're on the landing of a stone staircase with stairs going up and down. A door leads to the west. We're going up, in fact. We're at the top of the stone staircase. There's a door on the east side, which, in fact, we will go through. You're in a room which has just one door leading west. Through a glass panel below you, you can see a small theater. Four colored spotlights illuminate the empty stage. An electrician is standing in the room with you. Oh, please, can you help me? I have to set these spotlights for this evening's reception. I do apologize. I don't know why I'm talking like that. I have to set these spotlights for this evening's reception. The Drogo Committee. I'm not sure about that name, Drogo. Too easy. Will appear in their different coloured costumes, and I have to shine the right colours onto them, or else they look awful. Strange. So the costumes, why don't they just make the costumes the right colours in the first place? This seems like an incredible waste of energy uh, and choreography, and they don't understand showbiz, these drogos, being essentially machines and inhuman. But one of the four switches doesn't work. Will you help? So there are four switches, they operate four different lights, or they operate lights in some way, and we need to manipulate them. Will I help? No. Get lost. I'm joking. Yes, of course. Always happy to help. There are the four spotlights. Yellow, red, green, blue. Right, you see the lights as they are, but they should be like this. Blue, green, red, yellow. That's in alphabetical order. We have to use switches 1, 2, 3, and 4 to do this. And, in fact, after some experimentation, you find out what each switch does. You can type in 3 and you find out that switch 3 does nothing at all. You can type in 4 and you find out that switch 4 swaps the last two letters. Switch 1 swaps the left two letters or lights. And switch 2 rotates the right three lights to the left. And that is uh, that, essentially. Um, uh, you have to... Um, I've not exactly done this in the best possible way. Um, that seven moves, you've done it, says the electrician, but my apprentice, who's on holiday, reckons she can do it in four moves. Oh, bully for her. Will you try again? Who is this apprentice, and why is she uh, vicariously boasting about 
what she can do with switches. Seems to be a very miserable little thing to boast about. Anyway, um, yes, we will try again because, of course, thanks to Darren Izzard, we know exactly what sequence of moves we need to make. Four, that's one move. Two, that's two moves. One, that's three moves. Oh, the tension's building, the tension's building, it's palpable. That's four moves. The electrician thanks you for your help. He wishes you luck and warns you to be careful. Those drogos aren't to be trusted. Who are they? Why are they so mysteriously absent? We haven't had a peep out of a drogo since we entered the castle. Why are, why are you warning us about them? Uh, it's strange. Your attention is caught by a roughly carved wooden oar, which is propped up in one corner of the room. The electrician notices your interest and says you can have that if you want it. And why would we want it except, of course, for the strange internal logic of adventure games and this particular adventure game um, especially. So we will have it because, of course, it might be useful in the future, as these things tend to be. Thank you, Mr. Electrician. We are now going west, moving on. You are at the top of the stone staircase. There's a door on the east side, yes. We were just there, weren't we? Were we? I don't know. I don't think we were, actually, because we are in a new room. You have entered a large kitchen. There's a delicious smell of baking. Mmm, lovely. Around the walls are hung enormous metal pans and cooking utensils. In one corner is a large, old-fashioned kitchen range, giving out a great heat. The only way out is by the stairs. In the middle of the room is a scrub table, at which sits a cook surrounded by dozens of mixing bowls. The cook is sobbing bitterly, but on seeing you, manages to speak. I am glad to see you. I'm desperately worried. The Drogos are having a croquet party, and I have to bake a special cake for their tea on the lawn. The trouble is, they insist that it must be at least 25 cent. I do apologise. It must be at least 25 centimetres high, and I can't get it to, raise, uh, to rise properly. Will you help me, please? Of course I will, Cookie. It does occur to me that the descriptions here were possibly an attempt to teach uh, English composition, um, perhaps to uh, improve uh, reading skills, um, and in fact it also occurred to me that the reason for all the empty rooms is to create a challenge, the mapping of the game, the mapping of the terrain of the adventure itself um, is the challenge, is part of the challenge for pupils, school pupils playing this game, um, which is fair enough, and I apologise for my uh, critical comments earlier. The cook cheers up a bit. good -o. You see those three jars of white powder labelled Tolt, Fima and Muat? Well, I have to put in the right amount of each ingredient. I'll try another cake now, and you tell me how much of each to use. How many grams of tolt? And again, I do vaguely remember playing this, and it must have just been trial and error. What you discover, for example, by putting in random amounts of each substance, you can't use a thousand grams of femur. You can't use that much, says the cook. What a waste. Try again. How many grams of um, you find that different combinations of different amounts of these three ingredients result in different heights of cake. The cook puts the mixture into the oven, leaves it there for a few minutes and then takes it out. The cake is only nine centimeters high and doesn't seem to have risen at all. Will you try again? asks the cook desperately. Poor cookie. What sort of reign of terror is this cook living under if she's desperate and has been made so desperate by the need to make a 25 centimetre minimum cake? Um, they must be horrible people, the Drogos, in fact. Although, again, there's no evidence, no direct evidence that we've encountered yet. We haven't seen a single Drogo. Do they exist? Are they figments of these people's imaginations? Is that the ultimate point of the game? To teach you that all life is illusion. No, it isn't. It's to teach you maths. 
in a very annoying way. Um, in fact, Darren Izzard has come to the rescue again and told us that 6 grams of Tolt, 10 grams of Fema, and 10 grams of Muot does, uh, will in fact give you a cake uh, over the required height of 25 centimetres. Now, can I remember the... If I alter that slightly... Oh, sorry. I Yes, I will try again. If I alter that slightly... Oh, okay. That didn't quite work. I was trying to do something else clever, but it um, didn't work. Anyway, um, the point is, as it says now, the cook puts the mixture into the oven and after a few minutes takes out the cake. It's risen to a height of 25.28 centimetres. Um... The two decimal places there are the clue that, in fact, you can use two decimal places in the amounts of the ingredients that you specify. So I found that 5.6, 9.49, 9 and 9 will give you a cake of in exactly 25 centimetres in height. You don't need to do this. I was just being incredibly obsessive. Because no matter what you do, as long as the cake is over 25 centimetres high, the uh, tall, rather, the cook tastes the cake and says it's rather salty, but it's just the right size. So I wasted all my time, as ever. The cook fumbles in a drawer and hands something to you. I found this yesterday. It's no use to me. And of course, what does she hand us? Uh, a lovely cake or a bun, some icing, some ingredients, perhaps a drink to uh, quench our thirst on this arduous quest. No, it's an icosahedron made of highly polished jade. Because... As everyone knows, a cook ain't a cook without an icosahedron made of highly polished jade. But thank you, cook. Thank you so much. We now have an incredible collection of objects. A tetrahedron, a gold cube, an icosahedron, a dodecahedron, all made of precious uh, stones, a uh, mysterious vase of liquid and a wooden ore. And uh, if that makes any sense to you, I suggest that you seek help immediately. Now, we shall continue. Uh, we shall go back up. <clears throat> and then we shall go west. Young man, go west. And we are continuing to go west. And we're going west again. And we're going west again. And again. And finally, we find ourselves at the top of the spiral staircase above the boiler room. Um, and we're going to go down and down. And you're at the west end of a long passage with dark green tiles and flaky paint. You're standing at the bottom of a flight of steps. We're going east. You're at the east end of a long passage with dark green tiles and flaky paint. You're standing outside a door. And we go through the door. And you're in a room with two doors. To the east is a massive oak door, which is many hundreds of years old. Ooh, history. A smaller door leads to the west. On the mantelpiece, there are several key blanks and a small file. Get the blanks. Do you want to file one of the key blanks? Why on earth would I want to do that? Probably because that door is locked and we need a key to open it. Yes, I do want to file one of the blanks. And here is the second most irritating puzzle in the game. I, I, that's probably unfair. Um, it's This is the baffling puzzle I referred to earlier. Um, you just need to understand what it's on about, I think. And I was probably too dense many years ago to understand what I was doing. But... Um, it's actually quite clever, and I shall demonstrate this in the next part, part four. See you then. <laughs>